Simon, how is climate change messing with the motion of the ocean? Well, there are two ways that, that worry me. The first is that as the surface of the ocean gets warmer, the, there's a bigger difference between the temperature in the surface and the temperature in the deep ocean. And that means it's kind of like oil and water. The two don't mix very well. And so as the surface keeps getting warmer, there's less mixing of the surface and the deep waters. And part of the reason that matters is that mixing is how we get oxygen into the deep ocean. And so it's a really big problem for marine life all around the world. Pause, 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 pause. It's not just oxygen affecting marine life. It's also that warmer water forces fish and other sea creatures to migrate to cooler water just to survive. William Chung studies exactly that. William, thank you so much for joining me for a sushi meal. Oh, that's great. This meal is going to look very different in the next 10 to 20 years because of climate change. So can you sort of take me through some of the most popular items, mm -hmm. starting with, you know, everyone's favorite, the salmon? Exactly, yeah. I mean, here salmon, uh, we have two types. We have farm salmon and we have wild caught salmon as well. Uh, you can quite easily distinguish it because uh, Farm salmon are uh, often and almost always have a uh, is more fatty. So this is uh, a farm salmon. Exactly, and and here it is also lighter in color mm. uh, compared to the uh, wild caught salmon. Um, okay, which I'm going to try a bite of the wild salmon. Exactly, yeah. So then the climate change is one of the contributing factors uh, that lead to uh, the decline of, uh, of of sockeye salmon. What about tuna? Now this is also a classic. Let's give this one a go. Mm -hmm. This is one of my favorites, actually. Yeah. You can't go wrong with tuna. How is this going to change with climate change? The so tuna is one of the species that uh, has uh, shown um, large scale changes in the distributions um, throughout the world. Um, it's again, it's because of changing ocean conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, Albacore tuna is uh, more frequently um, seen and uh, being abundant in British Columbian waters. Interesting. Um, and now seaweed. I mean, it's a side staple. I'm going to give this one a go. Tell me how, how this has been affected. Yeah, seaweed is, uh, I mean, uh, lives in coastal waters. Uh, so the temperature sometimes becomes too hot for them, uh, and so there can be mass mortality of seaweed along the coast. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it is um, also a species that has uh, a low carbon footprint. Yes. And uh, in fact, uh, for some of the seaweed, they can actually contribute to carbon sequestration mm -hmm. because uh, they do photosynthesis, uh, they absorb carbon dioxide, capture the carbon from the atmosphere, and then if they um, do uh, various uh, oceanographic process, get buried into the, uh, the sea floor, then um, the, uh, the carbon that are captured by the seaweed can be stored there for a long time. Seaweed will, is both a climate change solution and in turn, we'll see more of it on the menus in the future. Yes. Well, it's a good thing. It is quite delicious. It is, yeah. <laughs> but the other one, is has been a big concern for years, particularly for Western Europe, is what happens if this great overturning of the ocean slows down. And the reason that, that can happen is because the water in the North Atlantic, where a lot of that deep water forms, uh, is getting a little bit less salty because of the addition of fresh water um, due to climate change. And it means that the, th there's a little less power to this overturning circulation. So this, this idea that the, the great ocean conveyor belt could slow down is where the movie The Day After Tomorrow came from. Because if we melted enough ice and added- The whole damn shelf is breaking off. The whole damn shelf is breaking off. I just had to say my favorite line from the movie. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So if you, if you melted enough ice from land and added all this fresh water to the North Atlantic, it is possible that the thermohaline circulation would, would stop or slow down this great ocean conveyor belt. The movie, though, is completely preposterous. It defies the mm -hmm. laws of physics. And that's the worry, that if it does slow down in hundreds, if not thousands of years from now, it might change the climate of parts of the world as we know it? Yeah, absolutely. And so the, the, the ocean conveyor belt is part of what keeps Western Europe so warm compared to the same latitudes here in Canada. Uh, and if, if the thermohaline, if this great ocean conveyor belt slowed down or stopped entirely, it could lead to cooling in, wet, cooling in that part of the world. But the scenario in the movie, that's not real. I, I didn't do anything. 